What are the origins of Jewish power where no one can say anything about them without having their career destroyed? In the Middle Ages, they made loans and they charged interest. Good Christians weren't supposed to charge interest because that's usury. They got into banking. They'd always been into banking because that's a Middle Eastern thing. It was set up in antiquity, the banking system that we now have internationally. So they got there up on the money aspect. You had people like Alexander Hamilton. He was raised as a Jew, born in Jamaica. And uh, he was what he was and has always been influenced. And there was always this thing in America about we have no official religion and we cannot have religious test is the basis for anything that is done by our government. By the way, that's Article 6 of the Constitution. So we have an open playing field, and they also used us. That's what the NAACP was. Now, you'll hear various revisions on who founded the NAACP, but as the NAACP toots and have for the last 60-some years that I have been intimately aware of. The purpose of the NAACP was this. Jewish folk were catching hell in America. So if you used the Negro colored people as a foil, if you couldn't do it to a Negro, you couldn't do it to a Jew. So the civil rights thing helped out the Jewish community immensely. And they have insinuated themselves greatly into the economic process of the country. Plus, you have English tr presidents like Disraeli, one of the most powerful English prime ministers. He was born a Jew, but he converted to Christianity. And since the thing is, is Christ was a Jew himself, and the whole basis of the hate is not so much racial, as it is your religion, that blurs the distinction because for the most part, you can't tell anybody Jewish from anybody who is Christian, from anybody who is Islamic based just on their appearance. So it's wide open in America. And then as far as the black experience goes, I remember attending a lecture by Thurgood Marshall years ago and he said what the NAACP and himself chose to do to advance civil rights for the first part of the 20th century since there weren't any real laws other than the 13th, 14th, and 15th amendments on it was this. They went to the Society for Prevention of Cruelty to Animals laws that states had passed. And the theory was, if you couldn't do it to a dog, you couldn't do it to a Negro. If you couldn't do it to a Negro, you couldn't do it to a Jew. So a whole lot of people have benefited from us being the Miranda, so to speak, about what rights are. Miranda's not a nice guy. People don't like Negroes, but they appreciate what we have set up in over 50 years it has been repeated over and over. You have to be fair and impartial. You can't be racist, even though somebody might be, but that's soaked into our national persona. So now some other groups take advantage of that, and they say, well, we're just like black folk. No, you're not. We have the same cause as black folks. No, you don't. But everything that's been said in association with black folk has been helpful to your cause. And Jewish people and Negroes and colored folk and black folk and Afro-Americans have been hooked up a long time in terms of what they're doing. Hollywood that so many of us ideate on is a Jewish enclave. But what is the, that's what I'm trying to say, what is the origins of their, their power in Hollywood? Because, the loans? because they chose to get involved. Now, let me ask you this. How did gays take over the interior decorating field? I don't know. Is it a situation? All right. It's something oh. that attracts certain people to certain things and they get involved. What do we ideate on? 
as black people? Yeah. What do you talk to typical black male youth? What does he want to be? Sports, basketball, yeah, player, football. Yeah, hey man, player, I'm a piece of basketball. Offered some kid a full scholarship to get an airline pilot's license, multiple instrument flying qualified, multiple engine instrument flying qualified, six figure income starting 22 years old with a major airline. He want to play basketball. He's five feet nine and he's 17. The that's how we ideate. That's what deals with that thing, that your group ideates on certain things, you tend to gravitate there. What you want to be? Man, I'm in rapping, man. I want to be a rapper. I want to do rhymes, man. I want to play me some ball, man. Make me some money. And if somebody else is talking about I want to do this, that's what they get into. See, and... The Jewish community is not homogenous. And there's another thing. See, there are atheist Jews who don't believe in the religion, but they have the culture. There are some similarities. Your Jewish status is determined by your mother's status. Your status as a slave or not is determined by your mother's status. Jews have had a rough time in the world, but if you ever read the Old Testament and what happens after they have the exodus from Egypt, a lot of what's in the Old Testament looks like they're doing ethnic cleansing to impose monotheism on the people they pass getting from Egypt back to the Promised Land. All kinds of things happen. And not saying it's appropriate, but there's a big mismatch right now in the whole world behind that. And people look for scapegoats. And the Jews became the scapegoats for Europe for a long time. And black folk are the scapegoats for America. You see, in any time you have a large population, you have a lot of undisplaced interpersonal hostility and aggression. People are mad, mad at each other. But if you've got a scapegoat, they can displace all of that on, even if vicariously, then they tend not to be so angry. So America would be a fine place if it wasn't for them militant negras that they have, like h rap something on others and Stokely whatchamacallit. Heard that a lot in the late 60s and early 70s. So it was a scapegoat thing. Love it or leave it. Them long-haired, commie, sympathizing hippies. See, that was scapegoats. This was an excuse for why it didn't work for you. You see, so right now we serve that vital function. You see, every time somebody looks at somebody being hip-hop or thuggish, people get to worrying about it. Even black folks see other black folk walking down the street and they want to walk on the other side if they look too gangster or too thug. White folk can be real thugs, real organized crime figures, and they don't get worried about it. Even the black folk feel comfy. And then, you know, it certainly doesn't help when you're going to take your mother or your mother-in-law or your girlfriend or somebody you're trying to court to a restaurant and somebody's yelling from one Carry side on, of the park, man. like, hey, man, you, you knock it out last night, man. You did with Tom and Deacon, man. Was it good, man? Like, do you have to share, really? Come on, tone it down. <laughs>